ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் வாட் ஆர் ஆல் த சேஞ்சஸ் தட் ஹேஸ் பீன் ஃபிக்ஸ்ட் ஆர் வாட் ஆர் ஆல் த சேஞ்சஸ் தட் ஹேஸ் பீன் டிப்ளாய்ட் இன் தி பேச்சி ஜேமி டூ வர்ஷன் ஃபைவ் டாட் சிக்ஸ் டாட் த்ரீ ஸோ த ரீசன் யூ ஷுட் நோ வை திஸ் ஐ மீன் லைக் வை ஷுட் ஐ வாட்ச் திஸ் வீடியோ ஸோ ரீசன் பிஹைண்ட் வாட்சிங் திஸ் வீடியோ இஸ் ஸோ knowing what changed from version 5.6 to 5.6.3 of jmeter will help you to make informed decisions of whether to upgrade or to use the current version of jmeter or to understand how to make the most of the new features and improvements and ensure the continued security and stability of the system so first we will start with the bug bug fixes so the first bug fix which is jmeter 5.6 shows zero as a minimum response time in summary report and this has been fixed successfully so here i have 5.6.3 which is the latest one and here i have 5.6 and let me run a quick test and i will show you what has happened so if you see here we have got a lot of hits that's happening during the test and you can see there are like huge number of samples within a less particular less amount of time and the average response time is 108 for this transaction the first transaction and 32 milliseconds for these as a maximum response time but the minimum response time stays zero for all these transactions and as i mentioned so that's the first thing that has been fixed in this report so now let me stop this test and i'll move on to 5.6.3 so here you can see currently we are in apache jmeter 5.6.3 and if i run this test and go to summary report here you can see we have so it's the same test i have nothing i have not changed anything in fact i have even they took the project from 5.6 if you see here on the top of the screen the same project what i did so demo.jmx nothing is changed it's the same thing but this minimum response time issue is fixed in jmeter 5.6.3 so the issue has been resolved and now the summary report correctly shows accurate performance statistics and now we will move on to the next part which is the constant throughput timer and the constant timer so let me open the jmeter page so here you can see we have got the issue with the constant throughput timer is throwing a null pointer exception when using variables vars dot get dot in and the same is with constant timer as well so previously there was a null pointer exception when using variables vars dot get in the target throughput field so now this issue has been fixed so if you if we set a target throughput of 100 requests per minute it will work now as expected so in this second bug fix the constant throughput timer i will take you through the demo so it's telling that the null pointer exception is being thrown when using variables vars dot get in the target throughput field so here now we are in the jmeter 5.6 and I have an example for you here so this user in it the jsr223 sampler is is just going to print user in it which is going to be the init initiative of the init transaction and here we have the value which is going to be 6 for the throughput and then i have a loop controller and inside that which and the loop controller runs for infinite number of times and i have a use case where i'll print the use case here and i'm going to use the groovy script for the same and then i have a constant throughput timer and here as i have mentioned in the uh, jmeter changes so i'm going to pass the variable through vars dot get in the throughput so which is going to pass the number or pass the value inside the vars dot get and i have the summary report to show the number of iterations let me clear everything and when i start the test so the moment i start the test you can see i have got the java dot lang null pointer exception and cannot invoke the method to double on null object so let me stop the test and come back to the apache jmeter 5.6.3 and it's the same 
file so it's the same settings the same user in it with the same groovy script and then i have a loop controller with infinite iterations and then i have a use case which will print line use case in the groovy script and then i have a constant throughput timer which does the where start get of throughput value to double and then finally I have a summary report to see the hits the number of samples or the throughput for this particular example and when i start the test if i click on this part here you can see there are no null pointer exception and in turn you can see the number of transactions that has been executed as part of using this constant throughput timer so this is again another fix that has been fixed this is another fix that has been fixed and now we will move to the constant timer example so now moving on to the next one which is the constant timer so here we have the constant timer where we have the thread delay in seconds and we were using the wires.get again the same kind of setup where we are going to pass the value in the wires.get so in case if you are using the constant timer instead of a fixed number and if you are using the dynamic values which you are going to use by using the wires.get so in that particular scenario this issue will surface for you because this was not working with the or uh, this is not working with the 5.6 so if i start running this script and here you can see the very first moment which is the java.lang null pointer exception and cannot invoke the method to integer so let's move on to the 5.6.3 it's the same settings again the same setup and when we run the test here you can see the test has started successfully and there are no errors and the variable has been initialized to 3000 so this is how the uh, issues that is with the constant throughput timer and the constant timer issues has been fixed in 5.6.3 so in case if you are using your constant timer in 5.6.3 you will not face this wares.get issue anymore and now let's move on to the other fixes and now the next thing which is log errors happening while jmeter starts that test so after fixing this issue jmeter now starts to log errors during the test startup which provides better visibility into any issues and then the next pull request which is the 6216 which is passing jdbc sampler dot max rows to statements dot set dot max rows so the driver does not fetch extra row from the database so so this too is again fixed now so similar to the previous one which is the other fixes so, the, so now the jdbc sampler dot max rows values is correctly passed to the databases statement dot set max rows which prevents unnecessary fetching of extra rows for example if you are using a jdbc sampler to query a database the correct number of rows will be retrieved based on your configuration and now moving on to the non-functional changes so the first part is the gradle update so jmeter now uses gradle 8.5 for building for example the build process which will be benefited from the gradle's improvements and next thing is you must all need java 17 for building jmeter for example if you are setting up jmeter lo locally we have to ensure you have jmeter 17 installed and the next part is improved api for programmatic test plan creation so the default implementation of methods like create test element modify test element and others have been improved for example if you are creating a custom uh, a, J, a custom jmeter component programmatically the api is more robust and coming on to the pull request 6212 which is refactoring migrate existing groovy tests to kotlin so existing groovy tests have been migrated to kotlin for example like for example like jmeters code base now benefits from the Kotlin's features and on top of this uh, there are some real known problems that is the one uh, 
own problems and the workarounds for that. For example, the once only controller, we which you all know, behaves correctly under a thread group or loop, or loop controller, but otherwise its behavior is not consistent. So in case if you are using a once only controller, please make sure you are using it under a thread group or a loop controller. And the number that appears to the left of the green box are the number of the active threads with the total number of threads. The total number of threads only applies to the locally run threads, otherwise it will show zero. So here you can see an example of it where the number of threads, the number of users it's showing us zero. But in, instead in the thread properties, we can see the number of threads is 20. But on the other hand, it shows just zero because it's not been run locally, it's been run in a remote setup. And for some of those who use uh, the Windows systems, you may ha you might have this warning. And this can be fixed by running JMeter as administrator because this will create the registry key for you. And then you can restart JMeter as a normal user and you don't have the warning anymore. So these are some of the known problems and workarounds. And I think I have discussed the major uh, bug fixes. I think mostly with the constant throughput timer and the constant timer and uh, the minimum response times because most of the people have got puzzled uh, uh, seeing only zero uh, as the minimum response time in their graphs when running the test so that's been a big relief for those who are doing the low tests using the jmeter 5.6 now it has been fixed in 5.6.3 and uh, again the jdbc part where we were able to fetch the proper number of rows based on our configuration so these are some of the major bug fixes and then when it comes to the non-functional changes yes so we need we must need java 17 for building jmeter and if you're using gradle 5. Uh, gradle you have to use gradle 8.5 for building the jmeter so with that i come to an end also we'll meet again with the new jmeter changes in the, in the next version so until then it's bye bye from us and retail slaw